On August 12th, HXL tweeted a link to some pictures of a supposed dual RX 570 card meant for mining that got about 60 mega hash per second in Ethereum. So what my 3070 Founders Edition gets while using only 125 watts. Now, the first thing I will say is as incredible as this performance sounds, it isn't unbelievable to me at all, despite being dual 14 nanometer dies in this card. Uh, my mid-scale mining days are long gone, but back in 2017 and 2018, I was kind of the mining Bitcoin guy of my friends group. That's a cake someone made for me and my brother back then. Back then, I had all sorts of rigs, and the first ones I built off of were ones that used RX 570s, and I was able to get at or above 28 mega hash per second if I really pushed those cheap cards to a 130 watts or higher. Now, this was cheaper cards with slower memory back then, with some, of course, modifications to the memory timings, but I can easily believe that with the latest GDR5 and specific voltages and clocks, that this thing can perform that well. Especially when I think of my RX 560 rig, where I push what most people thought of as like a 10 to 12 mega hash card to 16 mega hash per second at about 50 watts. That was a little budget card with half of the stream processors of what was in the RX 570. I, I get I, this is completely plausible that that's how well this card performs. All right, so if the mining performance itself is plausible, then the next thing you might ask is, does it really make any sense that a dual 14 nanometer card is launching in 2021? I mean, where is this thing coming from? And the first answer to that question, because there's a few, one linking to an old forgotten product that hasn't come out until now, but we'll get to that later. The first thing to bring up in answering that question is that this is being made from new old stock of Polaris dyes. You see, this isn't coming from Global Foundries made silicon that came off the line a month ago. This was stockpiled dyes from late last year, most likely. And it was stockpiled because, well, once components shortages showed up, a lot of people started stockpiling their cheaper dyes and focusing on the high end. If there's a capacitor that could be used between either an RX 580 or a 6700 XT, and these cards do share a lot of power components, then you're just not going to bother with the cheaper stuff. It's not just greed that you're not producing it, it's that you don't want to waste any components that are shared between the high end and the low end on a low end product if there's a limited supply. In fact, some of this old Polaris stock that is going into newly produced dual cards by Sapphire, supposedly, is also likely what's being used for, well, those $350 to $400 newly produced Polaris cards I talked about in my last video. Some AIBs are deciding to use their remaining stock to milk desperate gamers who can't get anything else. Sapphire is targeting the mining market with something that actually seems like it could be pretty competitive. But this is where we get into the part of the video that sent me down a rabbit hole in my research. You see this dual PCB? This isn't something that you just like stockpile. This is a custom PCB for a dual Polaris card. One that would have had to have had help in designing from AMD and probably had the lineage of its designs many, many years ago. In fact, it's funny that this is Sapphire. I am told directly, and it, it's well known by a lot of people, that Sapphire really is AMD's best AIB. They actually help AMD with R&D for one-off coolers and specialty products all the time. So it would make a lot of sense that if, say, five years ago, you know, half a decade ago when first Polaris came out, if there was some research into a dual gaming RX 480, a lot of that work would have been done in conjunction with Sapphire, between AMD and Sapphire. And I'm confident this unicorn product would have been produced as part of the RX 400 series, not the 500 series. If this was conceptualized for the 500 series, 
Vega was just about to come out. This doesn't really make any sense. This only would have made sense as a sort of Halo Dual Polaris product when they had no other alternative in late 2016 or I guess maybe very, very early 2017. And this gets even funnier. <laughs> I did some Googling after coming to this conclusion with some conversations with some of my AMD sources and I found a very well-written article by Usman of WCCF Tech from 2016. 2016 talking about a possible RX 490 launch and this doesn't smell like it was a bad leak to me and it definitely reads like it was some very good analysis of the information that was on hand at that time. So the combination of info he summarized and also this leak from Sapphire at the time which yeah this new mining card seems to be made by Sapphire I think that's what happened. I think all the way back then, and I did reach out to an AMD source who directed me to a professional dual Polaris card from the time. I, I think AMD did the legwork ahead of time on, of course, this dual professional card that they produced, and then they started to partner with Sapphire for a gaming dual Polaris product that has never come out. And if we look at this PCB here, this mining card just looks kind of a lot bigger and more lazy with its use of space. In other words, it's cheaper to produce. And that is something that Sapphire has the luxury of doing now, making it bigger and cheaper because it's not going to go in a gaming PC case. They would have taken something that was already designed and just said, how can we make this cheaper with size not being a factor? That's when I believe this mining dual Polaris card coming out this year, probably in very limited numbers, is. And honestly, I think using some of your remaining Polaris stock that you have access to for a dual die mining card for that market to actually kind of help gamers is a far better use of the remaining Polaris stock than what I know some other AIBs are doing, trying to sell $400 580s to desperate gamers who don't have another choice. I think this was a very good decision by Sapphire. Although to be fair, I'm under the perception that they helped develop this dual card for gamers with AMD. I wonder if the AI other AIBs even had an option of making a dual Polaris card this year, or if this is just their loss in Sapphire's gain by working so closely with AMD all the time. And either way, it proves one thing. Usman, you're on to something back then. It just never came out, but it was definitely real. And I guess the final question then is, why the heck didn't this come out, right? I mean, back then, I know a lot of people were saying in the comments, oh, if they can make an RX 480 that's, you know, around a 1060 in performance for under 250, for sure then they can make a sub 500, maybe even a $450 dual Polaris card that beats the 1080, right? And make no mistake, if AMD could have kept this below 550 or especially below $500, it would have undercut the 1080 in late 2016. The 1080, and a lot of people today forget this by the way, the 1080 was really a $700 plus card in the holiday season of 2016. I was used to seeing street prices of that card closer to 800 as everyone wanted the strongest card. That was the 1080 at the time. 1080 Ti was not out yet. And additionally, the founder's card for $700, that was actually a cheap cooler back then, not a nice cooler. So most AIB models were more than the founder's card, which is the same as now, but for different reasons, I guess. Anyways, though, yeah, a lot of people were saying if AMD can make a 480 for under 250, and then two of these together stronger than a 1080, certainly if they put them together, they could make like maybe even a $450 1080 killer, right? Well, it's not that simple. People would be good to remember that if it's a trashy dual card, yeah, you can kind of make it for the same as two single cards or maybe even a little less. But the second it's your strongest product and it's not like a one-off from an AIB, which this seemed to be an official-ish AMD product, it kind of has to feel like a flagship. You know, the 295X2 was not the price of two 290Xs. It was more because it was expensive to put two high performance dies close together and not get either really hot or really loud. So in effect, I wouldn't be surprised if AMD was like, eh, this might be more of a 550 or $600 product. 
And then you have to consider that even when AMD cherry picked their benchmarks a little, they barely were beating the 1080 in some crossfire scenarios. So you're basically saying we're going to launch a card that will assuredly use at least 350 watts and cost more to make than a 1080, but be sold for less. And then, well, Vega was actually supposed to be right around the corner. A lot of people forget that Vega was pretty clearly planned to come out late spring or mid-summer at least in 2017. And HBM2 sourcing problems and driver issues really delayed it far longer than AMD intended. But they didn't know that late 2016. They thought it was probably just a half a year or less away. And so why would we make this more expensive and awkward card when Vega's right around the corner, especially if it might make us look really stupid. If you'll notice, AMD showed Polaris Crossfire for about a month as a marketing thing, and they stopped pretty quickly as I think they realized how silly it made their technology look. Polaris was an excellent cheap-to-produce mid-range graphics card with more than enough RAM that's lasted many gamers I've talked to for five years straight. But as a dual card, it's kind of more of a Frankenstein that wasn't as competitive as you might have suspected. And so that's why I believe AMD never released this RX 490, well, <laughs> until now, I guess, for miners. And yeah, that's going to just about do it for this video. I went down a rabbit hole I did not expect to go down today, and I, I hope you enjoyed it. Hopefully this was fun to listen to if you're interested in gaming hardware and just as taking a break from the typical leaks or frankly what I think is sometimes can feel like just a lot of complaining about how hard everything is to get right now without well selling a kidney to be able to afford it. So if you did enjoy this video, you'll see many more leaks including some pretty crazy stuff I'm putting together soon for Intel. Coming out from me, subscribe to Moore's Laws Dead, ring the bell button, and share this video and like it. You know, do what you can to help if you're enjoying it. Really, all of that does help so much. And, of course, if you have the extra money, consider supporting the Moore's Laws Dead team on Patreon where you can get access to early ad-free versions of Broken Silicon. Ask the guests on Broken Silicon, including me and Dan, questions that we will read on air. And then get exclusive podcasts like Die Shrink. A new one came out today. So... As always then, besides all of that, thank you for watching.